I'm standing in front of our, one of our young ginkgo trees. So this is the ginkgo or maidenhair tree or ginkgo biloba. We have many in the gardens. This one's only been here since about 2000. They have these beautiful and unique fan-shaped leaves that turn a golden yellow in the autumn. But this is a very ancient and interesting tree. This is the only living member of an ancient lineage of plants that we know dates back 270 million years in the fossil record. Wild plants only survive now in China, but members of the order used to spread much further around the planet. It's a survivor not only in the ancient nature of the lineage, but because these trees can attain great ages. So there's a number of trees thought to be over a thousand years old. And recent studies have shown that the immune system of the tree represented in the cambium layer below the bark doesn't age. So they really are a resilient tree. Now, they're quite young and upright when they're juvenile trees. As they age, they get a much broader domed canopy. If you look at some of our older trees, you'll see that big canopy. And you'll also see in the case of our older specimen, aerial roots starting to form from the branches. And these are another testament to the resilience of these trees because as the tree gets stressed or ages it's possible for those aerial roots to hit the ground and many of the older trees in wild or semi-wild areas have multiple trunks. These trees are dioecious so there are separate male and separate female trees and it's really the female trees we're looking at at this time of the year because they're bearing their seeds. The seeds are held within a fleshy coating. They go yellow as they age and you'll find lots of them on the ground under our older trees. You may even smell them before you see them because these seeds as they mature and ripen they smell and it can only be described as a little bit like vomit. So that comes from butyric acid which is within that fleshy coating around the seed. Often it's male trees that are planted in parks and gardens because the male sporophylls don't produce that smell. They're a tree that's been studied a lot because they give us lots of clues into the origins of seed bearing plants. But they've also been standing out by themselves on the evolutionary tree for a very, very long time. So they're a unique tree that's venerated in Chinese culture, also in Japanese culture. They're often used as bonsai. The seeds are dried and then used in a range of um, foodstuffs, particularly in cookies at this time of the year, the Lunar New Year. Medicinally, the leaves have also been used both in the West and in traditional Chinese medicine. So these are not only beautiful trees, come back and visit them in the autumn when they take on their golden hue, but they're also really useful trees and trees that really help us understand the evolution of plants.